If you want to obtain the most out of any rendering engine, being able to control lights is a crucial skill. I received some requests on how to turn off the projection of shadows in reality or lux. Well, reality is all about realism. And in real life, if you place a light in a scene, that light will cast a shadow. You cannot turn off that feature. Ask any photographer. Let's, uh, let's go back a little bit in time and understand why that feature was first introduced. The ability to turn off the projection of a shadow was necessary in certain rendering engines because of the need to simulate certain lighting situations. For example, if you need to simulate indirect lighting, the way you do it is normally by placing a series of lights in strategic points in your scene and to turn off the projection of the shadow and keep those lights at fairly low values. In this way, you can simulate the light bouncing off walls and objects in a room. But in Lux, you don't need to do it because indirect lighting is one of the basic features of Lux. It's always on. So there is no need to use some tricks because in real life, you cannot prevent light from projecting a shadow unless some conditions are respected. And this is the point of this tutorial. How can we control light in reality and lux? And we're gonna see techniques that are basically a simulation of what photographers and cinematographers do in real life. So let's start with a simple example. I have a plane here and a cube. Now I have a sunlight, let me show you to perspective view and my sunlight is here and this is the camera of course so I'm gonna just uh, turn the sunlight like this okay and uh, switch to my default camera call reality and here I have my two objects one is selected as cube with a very, very low glossiness, one. And one is the plane. And um, we're gonna just do a quick render and see what happens. So here we look at the scene and immediately we can see that the shadow is very sharp. The sun is a very small light source. I know that it's huge, in reference to us is very small. And here is the first lesson in light control. The softness or the harshness, the sharpness of a shadow is directly influenced by the size of the light in reference to the subject. A small light source compared to the subject will always give you a sharp shadow and a large light source will always give you a softer shadow. The larger the light source is, the softer the shadow is. So in the case of the sun, the sun being this little disk in the sky, during a bright sunny day, the shadow will be very, very sharp. So let's stop this. And uh, we can uh, switch to the sun for our camera. And I can uh, you know, change the, the rotation, the angle of the sun, so that it's more like a sunset time of the day. And uh, call back reality, try again. We haven't changed anything, we just changed the angle of the sun. Now the, the shadow is a little longer, but it's still very sharp. The brightness or the angle of the light is not gonna change the quality of your shadow. It will extend the shadow, but it will still be sharp. So during a overcast day, what happens is that the layer of clouds becomes our light source. And if you 
paid attention. During an overcast day, during a cloudy day, the shadows are so faint that in many cases are invisible. How do we recreate that condition in Lux? Here it is. We go back in our scene, change it to a perspective view, and I'm gonna create a plane. Okay. I'm gonna change this plane and call it clouds. Now if I look at the plane, it's right here, I'm gonna bring it up, and uh, I'm gonna change the sides of this to be huge. Okay, so this is pretty much a simulation of the cloud layer, and it is well, the, the position of the sun is not really relevant. It's here just to illustrate the point. It's the rotation of the sun that is important, but the sun is always assumed to be up in the sky, so any plane that will be above your subject will do. So let's switch to a two camera point of view, and um, I'm gonna change here to be the default camera. I'm gonna change this to be the perfect perspective view. And I'm going to move this so that it's above our scene. Okay. And now I'm going to call reality again. And the clouds have been set to a matte translucent. I configured this before I started the tutorial, so to save you some time. But basically, matte translucent is the same material, if you want of a lampshade, so it works perfectly to simulate the cloud layer. If I go into my translucency, I change my colors to be reflection at 35, 35, 35, and transmission 134, 134, 134. Um, as a general rule, you want these two numbers together to be uh, no more than 255, because otherwise that becomes brighter than pure white, and that can introduce fireflies in your uh, in your render. So um, this can be a little brighter, but this is fine. We are not gonna see that material. It's used only for diffusion. So we are gonna do a render right now and see what happens. We can see that the plane is in the wrong position and we can see the edge of it. So let's close this quickly, go to our perspective view and I'm going to just move it a little bit and maybe resize a little bit. Okay. Re-render. And now we can see, even at this point, even so grainy, that the shadow is gone. And let's, here we go. A bright sunny day, but with a layer of clouds, no shadow. What we see here is basically the projection, the reflection of the red on the surface of the plane. And that's how you can change the quality of the sun. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to control area lights.